What is going on everyone? I'm Cucumber and I have recently started playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I have got to say that it, so far, has been quite the experience. With this video, I'd like to discuss some of the things that I've noticed so far with my first day of play. Also, there will be mentionings of storylines within the first few areas, so be warned. Spoilers will ensue. The first thing I want to discuss is what became apparent to me just recently. There's a sizable dichotomy within the content of The Witcher 3, that being between the narrative and the gameplay, for the lack of a better word. It may be strange to differentiate the two, and I believe I really only noticed a difference because of how I went about playing. I decided I would try to do as much of the side content as possible before ever continuing the main story. So, while I was completing contracts and treasure hunts, the Baron's family was left unfound for hours. The same thing occurred in Novigrad, which I'm still attempting to catch up on, as Horson Jr. ran rampant and Dijkstra's vault remained empty. I completely forsook the main story so that I could gather monster brains and harvest honeysuckle. I believe this caused me to actually facilitate or showcase the dichotomy based on how the two sides of the content are structured. I went from a constant sprint, going from one thing to the next to the next, only for me to be left with the narrative side of the game, slowing down from 60 to zero in mere moments. The narrative is very slow in comparison to the world and side content. With a quote unquote gameplay side, the combat, exploration, and the like is mostly fast paced and short. The main storyline content consists of cinematics and conversations, laced with the occasional walk over to the next person with whom you need to speak. However, it is not to say that these two sides of the content require any less involvement from the player. Rather, just varying forms of involvement. The narrative asks the player to stay a while and listen, or not, sometimes you're given that choice. And the gameplay side needs you to make both preemptive and split second decisions as you fight your way throughout the world. All in all, the narrative and the world content and what they require from the player are vastly different. And I can say from experience that playing one type extensively to another, it's quite jarring. So I would recommend, if you have not played The Witcher 3 like myself, to interweave the two forms of content as much as possible. Okay, before I get on the loop and start repeating myself, which I may end up doing anyway throughout the video, how about we move on to the gameplay side of the content, starting with the world and exploration. One of the many aspects that I've come to enjoy in The Witcher has been going around and doing side objectives and clearing the map. As I said previously, I've actually spent a majority of my first 24 hours purposely avoiding the main story in favor of doing this. Going around and finding those hidden treasures, destroying monster nests, and clearing out bandit camps has consumed hours of my play. While a map full of these nodes and vignettes has hit the spot, in more ways than one, concerning satiating the completionist drive in me, due to the sheer numbers of these objectives, I can say that, at the end of the day, forsaking the main storyline has tired me out. Based on how both the narrative and the world content are structured, when I solely involved myself in one type, the world, it rattled the pacing of the game. Me not weaving the fast world content and the slower narrative has made the experience quite the whiplash, but I've already discussed this enough already, so let me move on to the next aspect of the world content, the scaling. Something that took me by surprise was how the world was scaled. In the very beginning of the game, I was given quests recommended for those level 20, 25, or even 30 plus, but I had yet to leave Velen, pretty much the second area of the game. In my confusion at level 8, I walked over to the questing areas, curiously not knowing what I was expecting, and immediately realizing why the areas and quests were recommended for level 30s. I soon discovered the world was, in a way, independent of the player, and I loved that. There were places, even within the low level areas, that I was restricted from, and I thought that was really cool, because this mechanic is not something I'm completely used to seeing. In the grand scheme of things, this scaling mechanic is not too uncommon, but in the very limited sphere of games I play, I saw it as a welcome addition. This independent scaling also made me realize that CD Projekt Red had keeping the world, most of it at least, relevant past the point of the primary narrative would take you. CD Projekt Red wanted players to possibly come back to places like Velen or Novigrad to finish exploring what they missed or complete quests too far out of their reach when they first arrived. And I thought that was nice. Moving on to the exploration, this aspect of the world is 
somewhat contentious for me. Let me get what I really do like out of the way really quickly. I adored how often I would find random quests on the world while I was clearing out the vignettes. I would come upon a small village only for me to find out that everyone was turned into pigs, bar a man who dresses himself in the morning, and you were tasked with finding out what went wrong. That aspect of encouraging players to go out of their way to discover these little stories was very well implemented in my eyes. Not only that, the magnitude of the world, at least in the eyes of a filthy casual, takes me aback. It only takes me looking at the whole map for me to see that I have barely scratched the surface of what the world has to offer in terms of side content, even after over a day of playtime. The world itself, whenever I take a look at it, is also simply marvelous in terms of looks. The collection of terrains, valleys, and even battlefields is beautiful. On the other hand, it does at times get samey. But I believe this is only the case because I have not gotten very far in the story, so I cannot fully judge that. Now let me delve into the aspects that draw away from the exploration. TLDR, the act of exploring The Witcher 3's world is not very fun. That may sound contrary to what I was just praising, but let me explain. In all honesty, and I may end up changing this later, I find myself staring at the mini-map rather than what is in front of me when I'm exploring. Whether it be the city streets, mountainsides, or riverbeds, the mini-map is where my eyes fall by default. Like I said, I may end up turning it off at one point and try to experience the world without it. The Catch-22 about the situation lies in how, without the mini-map, finding quest locations or areas would be... arduous. Therefore, I am somewhat stuck on that aspect. Now that I have mentioned the mini-map, I want to talk about the UI and combat. I have got to say, the UI is quite possibly the worst part about the entire game so far. It is clunky, hard to maneuver, and overall just troublesome from start to finish. From the ways the bags are organized to the minimap in general, I just do not like the format of the UI. Simple as that, really. Moving right along to the combat, I definitely found it something I needed to get used to because as of late, I've been playing Dark Souls 2 non-stop. Changing from one of the tightest combat systems I've played to one of the most fluid is quite the experience. I can say that I've appreciated the combat for what it's been, but I cannot help but feel like it could be a little bit tighter because there have been many cases where I would go too far with everything. On the other hand, I have also had the opposite problem at the same time, which is somewhat odd even to me. It appears as if not going far enough is usually within the bounds of combat, but going too far in my movements has usually occurred while walking around and such. Concerning not going far with my movements in combat, if I had to describe it as anything, I would compare it to the lack of depth perception. It may all boil down to my lack of time with the game, but I never really know how close I need to be for my attacks to land properly unless I'm almost inside of my enemy before I start swinging. Therefore, I may just need to give The Witcher 3 a little more time so I can fully adjust to the combat movements. I also could not help but notice that the reaction time between my button presses and Geralt moving was a lot longer than I originally anticipated. However, that was with the alternative movement option active. Since changing to the standard, I have had less trouble with the responsiveness. Overall, this really encompasses most of what I have to say about the UI in combat, but before we move on, I want to talk about where the combat really shines. There have been several instances where me at level 14 to around 16 decided to go ahead and try level 23, 24, even 25 Witcher contracts and see how well I did. And let me tell you, those very few contracts I've managed to complete were by far some of the most engaging encounters I've run into during the game. While the monsters assigned to the contract were not any different than fighting the same monsters at my level, because of how much more powerful they were, they took a decent amount of time to kill and required that little extra focus in defending myself and creating strategies other than just tanking and spanking. I think the best example of this was when I decided to fight a really powerful Leshen who attacked a group of Dwarven Lumberjacks. I had fought one Leshen previously who was guarding a treasure chest and he was still a tough bout for me at the time. But because of that encounter, I knew how a Leshen attacked and was somewhat prepared for this fight. I go in there, and while I knew some of the Leshen attack patterns, 
The first legend I fought was still much weaker than this one, being level 25, while I was no more than 16 or 17. Therefore, I discovered a lot of attacks I previously was unaware of, like how he shoots ravens at you that whittle down your health from a distance. I had to learn on the spot how to best deal with these types of attacks and figure out how many attacks I could deal myself before I dodged away in anticipation of a counter. It was intense because if I did end up getting hit maybe twice, I would die and the fight was fantastic because of that. In the very end, this is what makes the Witcher 3 combat so endearing in my eyes. You are only truly limited by your weapon durability when it gets down to it. If you have the skill and enough weapon repair kits, you can kill almost anything regardless of your level. I may be stretching a little, but the point still stands, and I appreciate that aspect of the combat. Whenever I think about quests in The Witcher 3, I imagine the first Assassin's Creed game and how you went about finding your various targets. While the Assassin's Creed system was very samey throughout, I cannot help but tie the two together when it comes to the repetitiveness of the detective-esque format most of the quests in The Witcher 3 revolve around. I am not saying that the system itself is bad, it is certainly more refined and focused than the Assassin's Creed way of sleuthing, but having just about every quest involve you hitting up your Witcher senses and examining everything red lost its novelty pretty quickly in my eyes. It is very interesting to watch as Geralt can put two and two together as you find clues, but there's a severe disconnect between me and the game. I have no doubt that this is the case on purpose. It is Geralt that is the detective, not me. All I need to do is guide him over to the clues and Geralt will do the dirty work. However, it does irk me in a way for me to be able to play a game, but I could very well just watch someone else and get the same experience. You will not get the same experience watching someone play, let's say, Dark Souls if you played it yourself. They are polar opposites as you are forced to interact in every single facet. The Witcher 3 is different because most of the time I am just there to push Geralt along and I wish that, especially concerning the gameplay side of the content where I actually get to do a little more than pick dialogue options, I could get more involved in the process. This may just be me and I'm thinking about the format of the game all wrong, but like I said, it's probably just me. Moving along, I actually also really like the limited types of quests if you catch my drift. There are only four types of quests in the game, treasure hunts, Witcher contracts, side quests, and main quests. With the limited scope, I know exactly what I'm getting into and appreciate how you're really not bombarded with dozens and dozens of various quests all jumbled together in a mess for you to sift through. At the same time, this tight sphere of reach concerning the types of quests also limits many of them to the repetitive detective simulator. So once again, I'm at a loss to how any of this could be fixed or improved, if it should be at all. Now, let's move on to the narrative. I feel like I'm going to jump out of my seat every single time I think about the storytelling in The Witcher 3. Phenomenal. I have got to say phenomenal. I love how the story is told in this game, regardless if it's main or a side quest. There are so many little things you find throughout the world that give you a tidbit of insight on a character or a setting that just baffles me. A little tangent here, but when I usually play RPGs, I always end up playing a character that emulates me and what choices I would have made if I were in my character's shoes. Playing The Witcher 3 has opened my eyes to the possibilities being someone else would bring. I also discovered I would not be a very good Witcher, as there have been many times where I wish I could do things for free, but discovered Witchers never do anything for free. Anyway, getting back on track, I always find myself trying to listen to everything someone says, look at their expressions, and decide whether or not to say one thing or the next because many times you only get one chance and you need to say one thing or the other and I never know how things will turn out. And it's just, oh my goodness. Also, in this game, unless I reverted to save, I have never had the desire to skip dialogue when conversing with others because I have perpetually had the thought in the back of my mind that warns me that I will need to respond to what they're saying. So if I skip everything, I will not have any context or anything and I love how the game keeps me involved in just watching people talk. Another thing is, the way the conversations are formatted is fantastic. Every time you talk to someone, you might as well be watching a movie or a TV show because the way these moments are shot, 
and how each character emotes and responds to you is amazing in my eyes. The aspect that I love the most about the storytelling in The Witcher 3, however, is how you get to know the characters. You are given the opportunity to intimately know these characters, in more ways than one on some occasions, and I have grown to love so many of the people within Geralt's life that I'm cheering them on or jabbing at them at every opportunity because I know they are the kind of guys to hit right back. People like the Bloody Baron, Dijkstra, Triss, even Yontek from the Village of Pig's Quest are fantastic to get to know as you learn what they love, hate, their intentions, and what drives them. This game revolves around the characters and their actions rather than a fixed story, and I adore that about the narrative. The next aspect on the list is the depth of each of these stories. The Bloody Baron questline is a perfect example. No, I will be going into major spoilers about one of the first main storylines, so be warned. Whenever you get the chance to talk to the Bloody Baron after discovering that his missing wife and child had actually fled from him after repeated abuse, you get to learn so much about the Baron and his side of the story. Whenever you learn that the Baron stole, I'm paraphrasing here, a life of love, from his wife after she ran away with another man by killing him in a rage was not all that surprising, but it contributed to why he acted the way he did. And I also felt the pain he expressed as he told you how his actions, he believed at first, killed his unborn child. This leads him to wanting to save his wife from the three crones in Crookback Bog, and you get to help him out. And then you learn that his wife, Anna, did not miscarry because of the Baron. Rather, it was the pact she made with the crones to get rid of it. The story goes even further, but I think you get what I'm saying. These stories possess so much depth that it would be a quest in and of itself to swim to the bottom of each. They are simply fantastic, and I do not even think I'm halfway through the game right now. Not even close. Overall, from my point of view, The Witcher 3 is about the characters, not a fixed narrative. And I have got to say that this game has some of the best, most engrossing stories I've seen in a video game, bar none. Alrighty, that does it for me today and my initial thoughts on The Witcher 3 so far. I'm certainly looking forward to whatever else the game has in store for me, and I have no doubt that it is only going to get better from here. Tell me what you guys think about The Witcher 3. Have you enjoyed it as much as I have, if not more? Other than that, if you have any questions, quarrels, or queries, be sure to let me know. I'm Cucumber, and remember... Pass the dressing.